What's up, Internet? I'm up here in Oregon at the Mackenzie River Inn. Um, that's that's the next vlog. So, just wanted to talk about Comic Con, my first experience traveling and sleeping in the van. So, I finished the van Thursday and headed down to Comic Con on Friday, which was a day later than I originally wanted to, but you know, the work took a little bit longer than I expected. So, I got there around 3 o'clock in the afternoon on Friday, and in short, it was a nightmare. I couldn't find parking within a mile and a half of the convention center. There were paid lots that cost $30, and the ticket would have only been good until 5 o'clock, which left me two hours or less to explore the exhibit hall, and, I mean, $30 for two hours of parking is an absolute rip-off. So, after an hour and a half of looking for a place to park, I ended up just giving up, uh, giving my cousin a call, and I went to hang out with him. So, we just had dinner, had a few drinks, and just hung out for the night. So, I spent the night in a neighborhood in San Diego, outside of downtown and we took the bus in instead of trying to find parking and that was a thousand times better I mean five dollars for an all-day bus pass and a quick 15 minute ride into downtown it was no hassle at all so as far as sleeping in the van goes it was a great experience I mean no one bothered me I, I didn't have any problems I was able to just park on the street in a neighborhood. Yeah, I mean, I, I didn't have any issues. The one thing that I found, though, was that I need curtains. Curtains are really important. When I was looking for parking downtown, I didn't realize that there were so many homeless people in San Diego. But it makes sense. The weather's so nice, they can just sleep outside year-round. But there were a few spots, like street parking spots, open. But the streets were lined with tents where people were just living there. So, I didn't feel comfortable leaving my van parked there with all of my belongings inside of it, especially when I don't have curtains up yet. So, what I ended up doing when I did find a parking space was I just rigged up some... I, I hung a scarf from one window, I had a towel on another window. Uh, it was just kind of a mess. I mean, I bought a blackout curtain, but I don't have a rod or anything to hang it up, so I ended up just clamping that on across the top shelf here. So, yeah, curtains are very important, especially when you're trying to park in an urban area and you need privacy. Luckily out here, at the inn, I mean, you can see I'm, I'm out in nature. My family rents out this entire place, so there's no one else here. I don't have to put up curtains at all. I can have this nice panoramic view of... I mean, the river is right behind me, so... This is great, but when you're in an urban area, curtains are very important. Especially because you have so many things in your van. The other thing that came up was heat. San Diego's hot, obviously. And overnight it was fine. I, I was comfortable because it stays pretty warm throughout the night. I even had to open the window and turn the fan on just to get a little bit of ventilation. But in the morning when I woke up, it would be fine if I didn't stay in the van too long, but if I would wake up at 8 o'clock and stay in here until 9, it would get really hot, especially with me moving around a lot. And, you know, I'm keeping the blackout curtain up. All the curtains, or the curtains, were up while I was in the van, just kind of trapping heat in here. Yeah, it, it made me wish I had a, a roof vent or a fantastic fan or something, but... You know, it wasn't in the plans, it wasn't in the budget, but it's it's looking like a good addition now. As far as using the bathroom and showering, luckily my cousin was staying with his girlfriend, and I was able to park near her apartment and shower there, use the bathroom there. Um, so that wasn't an issue for me on that trip. So let's talk about Comic-Con now. Um, Friday as I said, was an absolute mess. So, this was my first con ever. My first Comic Con, my first con in general. 
I had no idea what to expect, but I definitely did not expect to see so many people there. The place was packed. Downtown was flooded. There were people all over. And it was it was a nightmare trying to get around in the van. And walking, even walking was difficult. You know, navigating through crowds. But I guess it, it is the biggest convention in the world, so... You know, I guess that's to be expected. Um, but once we got inside, it was really cool. I'm not exactly the biggest geek when it comes to the superhero movies or comics. Um, I don't even watch a whole lot of anime. I try to. I've started a lot of shows, but I don't keep up with them. So I don't belong strongly to any of these fandoms that people are there representing. But even so, even as just like a, a casual geek, I guess, it was a really cool experience. There was a lot of cool stuff to see. Um, a lot of really great artists had booths set up. It was cool to, you know, find out about new art. And I bought a print from an artist that I like, Rody Montijo. And there was just all kinds of cool stuff. Comic-Con's all about the exclusives, as you might know. You know, the stuff that you can only buy at Comic-Con, most of it doubles instantly in price on eBay. So I wanted to get as many exclusives as I could just to resell them, try to recoup some of my costs on the van. But the lines for those were insane. The The Lego line, it was easily a three-hour wait, and when you get to the front of it, there's only a 50-50 chance that you're even going to get anything. And, you know, it was probably worth it because... The minifigure that you buy there for ten dollars, you can turn around and put it on eBay for a hundred and fifty. But uh, you know, I didn't, I didn't want to spend my first Comic Con waiting in line, so I picked up a couple exclusives that I didn't have to wait too long for. I got some Halo Nerf gun type things for my brother since he's really into Nerf, and uh, I picked up some pop vinyls that I'm just gonna resell. The coolest thing that I bought, honestly, was this Akuna Speed Stars sticker, which is from Initial D, one of the few anime shows that I've actually watched multiple seasons of. And, I mean, I guess it takes away from the stealth a little bit, but I feel like it also makes the van seem a little less threatening, since it's not just a plain white van anymore. You know, the decal kind of says, this is just a, a normal person's van. Like, don't stress. Plus I hear initial D decals add like 10 horsepower. There's a lot of uh, signings that are going on throughout the weekend. A lot of big celebrities are there. Um, actors from Marvel movies and TV shows and uh, voice actors. Obviously I was there with Dante. So there's a lot of cool like toys and stuff that people are selling. You know, like I said, I'm not I'm not too strongly aligned with any of these fandoms. Uh, I was looking for some cool Pokemon toys, but there were a lot of really overpriced keychains and little figures and stuff. If, if I was uh, more into some of these things, I definitely would have bought more. Um, you know, it's, it's Comic-Con, there's just a lot of general weirdness going on, but it's cool, it's a lot of fun. And I think if you're at all interested in any of the things that go on there, you should definitely check it out. Another thing is there were a ton of people in cosplay. I saw a lot of really cool, well done, well put together cosplays. The other thing that goes on at Comic Con is panels. And I got to go to a few which were pretty cool. The first one was the Avatar Legacy panel where I went with Dante, obviously. Um, I got to meet Jack DeSena, the voice of Sokka. I got to meet Giancarlo Volpe who directed a lot of the episodes. Aaron Ehas who's a, a writer for the show and uh, Darcy Rose Burns, who's the voice of Iki on Korra. So that was really cool. They did um, a live read from one of the upcoming comics. Yeah, well, I still prefer my rides to be mechanical. Except you, of course, Abba. <laughs> that was a cool panel. It was, it was cool to be around other Avatar fans. I think Avatar is probably one of the shows that I'm most interested in. It was cool to be around other Avatar fans because I feel like it, they're hard to come by in the wild. You know, I 
follow a bunch of Avatar blogs on Tumblr, and it's it's rare that I meet people in real life who enjoy the show as much as I do. It's not even just because my cousin was one of the voice actors. To be honest, I didn't watch it when it originally aired, even though I knew that it was a project he was working on. It wasn't until a few years ago when my roommate and I decided to just watch the entire series together. So we would spend hours a day just sitting in my room watching the show, and I got really hooked on it. Um, if you haven't watched it, I recommend you check it out. It's not just for kids. There's a lot of really good wisdom to be gained from the show. Um, so that's my little plug for Avatar there. Another panel that Jared and I went to, to be honest, it was just because we were tired of standing and walking around the exhibit hall. We decided to pick a panel just so we could sit down in the seats. So we ended up going to a live illustration panel by Park Jung-gi, who's a Korean artist. And I wasn't familiar with his work beforehand, but I'm, I'm definitely interested in it now. So basically what he did was he asked, what do you guys want me to draw? And a bunch of people yelled zombies. I guess that's one of the things that he's known for. So he just started drawing, and it was really cool to watch this piece of art take shape. You know, he had no guidelines, he had no sketch from pencil, he just put this all out straight from his head and it was it was really cool to watch that come together. And the entire time he was taking questions and a lot of people asked about his creative process which was really interesting and really inspiring and actually it kind of reminded me of David Cho who's also a Korean artist, Korean American, but there were a lot of similarities in that they both said that from a young age they believed that they were the best artist because David Cho, because his mom would tell him, you're the best artist in the world, and that really got into his head, and Park Joon-gi, because he could see that he was better than all the other kids in his classes growing up, so I thought that was interesting, and then the other thing was that they both enjoy drawing graphic, perverted material. Park Joon-gi said for, for warm-up and for inspiration, he just watches porn and draws perverted things. So I, I just thought that was pretty interesting, the similarities between the two. Yeah, after that, Jared and I checked out a Magic the Gathering panel, which I've played on and off since I was in fifth grade. Every once in a while I'll just get back into it, usually not for very long, and I mostly play casually with friends or whoever. Occasionally I, I'll check out a Friday Night Magic and play some draft, which is pretty fun for me. Um, Mark Rosewater, the head designer of Magic, was there, kind of leading the panel. So I was hoping they would talk more about the design process, but it wasn't that type of panel, I guess. They were talking more about their future plans for Magic and what's changing, and, um, you know, but that was still interesting. It was, it was cool to hear about the story behind Magic. They are trying to bring that more to the foreground. Um, I've I've enjoyed reading magic novels in the past, so that was cool. It was cool to see some of the faces behind the game that I have enjoyed playing for so long. The last panel that I went to was this Super Asian Americans panel that Dante was on with a few other prominent Asian people in the community, a couple of comic book writers and illustrators, um, some actors, voice actors. Chloe Bennett from Agents of S.H.I.E.L.D. was one of them. Um, there's a stuntman, Ilram, who uh, I think he did the stunts for Spider-Man. Greg Pak, who created Amadeus Cho, he was really cool. He had a lot of interesting things to say. But yeah, that panel was really enlightening. It was all about Asians in media and, you know, why we're not more represented. Um, I'm half Filipino, in case you didn't know. So I really identified with a lot of the things that they were talking about during this panel. This is the only, this is the only place that I've been to in America. As Asians, we would have wanted to be like more white or more black, right? This is like the con, the con world is the only place you'll see where black, white, Latino, other people are, want to be Asian. <laughs> <laughs> 
the craziest. When you really see it like that as Asian Americans, you're like, oh shit. <laughs> <laughs> Don't do it. Like, oh my god. So we have to kind of start seeing where we do have leverage, where we are kind of leading the pack. And it was just a, a really important conversation that needs to be had. And it's something that we talk about uh, on the 8th of every month in L.A. at We Own the 8th, which is an arts collective that Dante co-founded. The purpose is to bring Asian Americans in the arts together, to breed collaboration, to talk about important issues, um, try to figure out ways that we can get ourselves more represented and get our stories out there. So you should check that out if you're in L.A. and interested at all in the arts. Uh, I mean, you don't even have to be Asian to come show up. So, there's a plug for We Own the Eighth. Check it out. And we got to take the freight elevator out after that panel, which was pretty cool. I felt like I was, I guess I was behind the scenes at Comic-Con, which is pretty cool for your first time down there. Um, so, overall, Comic-Con was great. It was a lot of fun. I really enjoyed walking the floor, checking out the panels. And it kind of inspired me to create more, which is something I've been trying to do my entire life, I guess. You know, I was really into drawing when I was younger. I've done a few game design projects where I'll just download RPG Maker or hack a Pokemon ROM. So this is my pledge to start creating more content, start writing some things for Dante's channel, try to tell some good stories. So I hope you guys will stick around for that. For now, here I am in Oregon with my family, so I'm going to go enjoy some family time, and I'll see you guys in the future. Thanks for watching.